Okay, there's so many things that that have come out. Okay, but because of the storyline, people now think that the reason he left was because he he was not going to be allowed to win the AEW title, and that had nothing at all to do with it. It makes for a good story, but that had nothing. The the belt had nothing to do with it, and the idea it was his choice because he was a the Booker. His choice was he did not want to win the title because he didn't want to be like the bad part. I don't want to say the bad part of Dusty. He loves Dusty. Okay, obviously Dusty's his hero. Dusty's his dad. Dusty taught the business to him. That's why when certain things happened, I always think of Dusty and how Dusty would have handled it. And that is the the molding of Cody, which is why this happening was... um. I mean, it was a surprise, but once he kind of told me a few things um, without telling me like what he was doing, but, you know, um, I, I understood it because it was like, this is how Dusty would feel if he didn't get what he wanted. And I don't know what it is he wanted, but it wasn't the championship because I'm not saying he could have won the championship. Tony made the choices on who was going to be the champion and Cody, you know, he said it before his list when this company started was it was going to be Chris Jericho, John Moxley, Kenny Omega, Adam Page in that order. And he did not vary from that. He made the dates changed, but the names did not change. And Cody was not going to be that person, which may be why Cody did that, number one. But the other one was it was very much he didn't want to be the guy who's world champion and then gets criticized because, oh, you're a vice president. You made yourself world champion. He thought that as a vice president, um, it wouldn't be. They they all had that problem. If, if that's what, you know, the thing was, they were all they all overcompensated for the, you know, and this is not just Cody. Kenny Omega fit in this category, the Young Bucks as well. If you remember the first three, four months, six months of the company, and I would come complain you got to get these guys over first before they try to get other people over and their whole thing was you know until tony basically took over um the booking was you know they didn't want to be seen as oh we're vice presidents we always win so they all they wanted to always lose and that's what created a lot of the stuff early until tony was like you know i just went like you're paying these guys so much money and they're losing to you know i'm not saying they never lose but they should be the top guys at first and instead their mentality we jump going right out of the shoot was we got to make other guys and and at time and, and in time you would have to um you know cody with mjf made all the sense in the world to lose to him um and you know the other stuff and everything but you know he he had fallen to where he was um you know you could see how he was booked um um and and again I would think, and I, I would think he would understand that when Andrade came in, when Malachi Black came in, and when Brody Lee came in, and when these guys came in and went with him, he did have to lose the first one. That was just the right thing for business. Now it's like he's kind of talked about how, oh, they brought everyone in and, and, and all that. But, you know, you, that, that's just business and everything. So, um, but, but, um, it is interesting because, like I said, none of those losses matter now. You're in a new place. And it's. I think that, again, his reaction should be a lesson to everyone, that you can be a um, a mid, I don't want to say, you know, mid-card's a weird word because it, it connotates something. And he was not really, a, I would not call him a mid-card guy. He was a top guy in AEW, but he did not work. Um, he only worked one pay-per-view main event, you know, which was the the Jericho match early on, where he put the, you know, the stub of the big stip and everything. But, um, you know, he was, you know, uh, w whatever, you know, he was battling for the TNT title, and he was a he was one of the key names in the company. But but he was not, um, you know, one of the two or three key names in the company. And right now, he can go into WWE as a new character, and God knows they need new fresh characters he came at the right time it's the right time for everybody i mean i'm not saying for AEW necessarily but the right time for wwe for him to come and absolutely the right time for him to come i mean i you know i mean i i time will tell if he made the right decision but if wwe um 
you know, it it looks like he made the right decision. I mean, I may have to change my mind in nine months um, because I've been wrong many times about with people where I suggested they go to WWE and because they can't miss and, and they missed. Um, and again, I'm not going to go say he can't miss because I'm not that stupid to say that because anyone can. But it looks good. it looks good after two days. So Seth Rollins comes out.